everybody, welcome back, welcome back, and if you are new and just joining us here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so since my last couple of videos have been more, uh, explanation based and tutorial based, I thought that today we could work through a specific, um, practice problem for proving trig identities, and, um, this topic in general was uh, requested by a an awesome viewer that we have here and uh, they said that this in general is their arch enemy is that how you say it? arch enemy? arch, arch, arch enemy? arch enemy? arch nemesis? <laughs> uh, their words, not mine but um, I thought, hey, you know what? I'm here, let's defeat this darn thing once and for all maybe even get to enjoying it a little bit because it can be fun um, let's do this problem, but I am going to try and generalize it or keep it pretty general when I explain this so that you can apply it to whatever it is that you're doing and, uh, hopefully we can build some tools and you got this so you can do it on your own. So, we're going to prove that tangent squared x plus 1 plus tan x secant x equals 1 plus sine x all over cosine squared x. So, I am going to emphasize first, I'm going to highlight this uh, equal sign. I think this is the most underrated thing in math. It's so simple and I think it gets taken for granted, which is so sad, but it's so amazing. Amazing, amazing. So, what's so good about this is that we are trying to prove this thing equals this thing. So, I'm just going to call this the left hand side. Makes sense, right? This is the left hand side, left hand side, so the left hand side equals the right hand side, RHS, right hand side. So I'm trying to prove that this thing equals this thing. It seems so simple, but what's cool about this is you can either start from the left hand side and say that equals this and using definitions or um, trig identities that we already know or have proven already or um, just working through some algebra, as long as we're taking steps that are mathematically correct, we can start with the left hand side, say that equals this, equals this, equals this, and then end up on the right hand side. And or we can start from the right hand side, do the same thing, definitions, algebra, trig identities that we've already proven or know, and just say this equals this equals this equals this and end up on the left hand side. And that's just all based on the fact that if b equals a, then a equals b. It's just reflexive. Just so simple, but it's so nice, and not everything is that way. So, um, it's just so simple. Um, and then we can also, if these two are just very complicated, like whatever you actually have here and here, if it's not obvious to you why they are equal, you can just start from each side and simplify them, and whatever you get here, if those two somethings are equal to each other, then you know that this equals this. And that's basically if a, wait, if a equals c and b equals c, then you know that a equals b, because it's like a equals c equals b, and so a equals b, and so there's a lot of logic that uh, you can just use reflexivity and uh, I forgot what the other one transitive 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 property <laughs> the transitivity um, but that's what's kind of cool about this so if you have a teacher or someone who's writing out proofs like this uh, that look like they know exactly where it's going or know exactly what they're doing they probably don't I found that I use the word typically a lot or generally a lot just because there's always exceptions to everything but I think that um, it you know it might look like you're missing something if someone's just proving this out and it looks like they know exactly where they're going with it a lot of times they don't or they worked um, they worked it out ahead of time so I don't know if that's reassuring for you or not but you're definitely not like missing anything so uh, what I can do though is give you a few tips as you're working through this kind of stuff so um, like I've said in a different video, or I think it was the last video, but if you have, um, a bunch of tangents and secants and stuff, you can always fall back to writing it all in terms of sine and cosine, 
because sine and cosine are our basic two trig functions that are based on um, the xy coordinate plane in the unit circle because cosine theta, not x, but theta like an angle is our x coordinate and sine theta is our y coordinate. So that's those are the two that we're going to see the most. Um, and then tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent are all like um, variations of those or like defined in terms of those. So in other words, we should know that tangent x equals sine x over cosine x, for example. These are things to memorize. Or secant x equals 1 over cosine x. Okay, these I would consider definitions, not identities. So these are more just, these are must-knows, as I would call them, must-knows. So if you don't know um, how to do these at all, or don't know where to start, this might be a good place to start. Change all of the tangents, secants, cotangents, cosecants in terms of sine and cosine. Um, because, and then on both sides, and then see if you can convince yourself that the two sides are equal, then you have to do some algebra, typically, or usually. So, um, in this case, I will do, I will start from the left-hand side, only because I also noticed something else. Just looking at it, um, I noticed that this is something that we know. We've already proven. You may or may not remember it, but this is actually secant squared x. So I don't know where I'm going with this exactly, right? But I know I'm going to start simplifying stuff. And so I definitely suggest just start. Like the longer you just stare at this thing, the more that's just going to be like, what the? I'm confused. So just start somewhere and do something mathematically correct. I know you can manage to do that. So just start somewhere and it will take you to where you need to go. And so this I know is secant squared x. This is one of our um, identities. It's a variation of our sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, uh, where we basically divide by cosine squared on both sides. But if you don't remember this, this is definitely what I would call a nice to know. It helps you. Uh, it saves you time. And uh, I would say it's a must know if you are t like in a trig class. Uh, it will help you like on tests and proving these kinds of homework problems and stuff. But if you know, if you're taking a whole bunch of other classes and you plan on taking more math, then this is probably one of the first things you'll forget. So it's probably more important to understand where it comes from, which we can always do. And you know that I'm always a proponent of not memorizing, like just memorizing as little as possible because down the line, that's just way too much math to memorize. So I would say these two are must-knows. This is a nice to know unless you're actually taking trig now, then just go ahead and memorize this. So since I'm assuming that we are taking trig together here, I'm going to assume that we know this. And I'm going to do this. Okay, so then I realized, oh wait, I forgot. I'm trying to get to this thing, which only has sine and cosine. So I'm going to kind of, you know, change my mind, which I'm allowed to do because this is equals, equals, equals. So I'm just going to go ahead and write each of these in terms of our definitions with sine and cosine and see what happens. So secant squared x is... Um, it's the same thing as secant x all of that squared. It's just the way that it's written here is like secant x squared is secant squared x um, keeps us from confusing it with secant x squared because that can be tricky. So just remember, if you're not familiar with this notation, just get used to it being secant x all squared. So we read that secant squared x. So if that's secant x squared, we know secant x is... 1 over cosine x squared plus, right, plus tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So we're just doing definitions now. Times, times, secant x is 1 over cosine x. So just cross that out. So this equals 1 over cosine squared x uh, because this, it's this squared over this one, plus, and then we multiply fractions here, so sine x over cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x, 
Okay, so this would be cosine example. Don't confuse this with cosine x squared or cosine x squared. <laughs> so cosine squared x. And now we're just adding, we're adding two fractions. So we need a common denominator, which we already have conveniently. So easy peasy. We just keep that denominator, add the numerators. So we can't just forget all of our previous math lessons, right? When we're adding fractions, we keep the denominator, add the numerator, and what do you know? We just got the right-hand side. How awesome. How simple. Right-hand side. Yay. So we basically just did our proof. We went from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and that's it. So um, I did want to point out that, like I said, remember, we can do left-hand side to right-hand side, right-hand side to left-hand side, or left-hand side to something, right-hand side to something, and let those somethings be equal. So I wanted to show you this way, but I also wanted to point out, let's say we got to here, and then we got stuck. We didn't know what to do, okay? So what I would do is from here at this step, this step, I would just start on the right-hand side also, and I would just kind of take notes. And you don't have to expect yourself to just write a perfect proof, like right when you start. You are allowed to write stuff on scratch paper, right, and then go back. So I would just kind of start here. It's like just going on faith. As long as you're mathematically taking steps that are okay, then you will get there. So this thing, let's say we got only to here and then didn't know what to do. I'm going to start here and do some algebra. So this, we can distribute this denominator because there's no plus or minus here. We can do that. And if it helps you to see it, it's basically this, right? For dividing or multiplying by its reciprocal. So I can, you know, distribute this. So I get 1 over cosine squared x plus sine x over cosine squared x, which equals 1 over cosine squared x plus sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. So essentially, we are doing this rest of this part backwards, but like I said, if we just kind of got here and didn't know what to do, we can go back and apply some definitions and see that 1 over cosine squared x is secant squared x, sine x over cosine x is tangent x, and 1 over cosine x is secant x. So we got this thing. So what I would do is I would, you know, start with the left hand side, get to here. I might label this like star a or something like that, just logically. Then I go from the right hand side simplify, do some algebra, do some definitions, and look, these two are equal. So I'm going to call that star a, and if I were to, you know, write this out more formally, I would say left-hand side to this thing, right-hand side to this thing, these two are equal, therefore left-hand side equals right-hand side. So it's whichever way, like, kind of makes the most sense to you for each particular problem. Logically, these are all the same. In my opinion, in this case, it's the simplest to go from left-hand side straight to the right-hand side, but you might not know that right off the bat. Um, and I know that for some classes, just go off of what your teacher says. If uh, some teachers prefer that you just go from one side to the other, so follow that. Um, and also, some teachers also do, I know some of my students do this, but um, you have like your page and you have to write your step and then your justification. So explaining why each step is allowed. Just as I would do this line, this is my left hand side, equals this based on the fact that tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant x. Then I'd write this step and I'd be like, this is by definition of secant x and tangent x. Here I would say, by uh, multiplying fractions, and then here I would say adding fractions, and then that would be our lovely QED. End of proof. So that's what I would do for this type of this type of uh, layout, if that's what your teacher wants. Uh, so just follow that. But uh, I just wanted to point out that just in general, when you're doing proofs in general, there's a few different you know logical patterns that you can do. If you were lost here, I'd go back to the definitions of sine, cosine, 
tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, and I probably will have a video down the line where we can just study that together in a relaxed way, and uh, then we can go back through these, and um, as you imagine, we can have more trig identities once we cover half angles and double angles, so there's just so many identities it's really all it's about is having true statements where this equals this so you just need to memorize the basic ones or know how to derive the basic ones and then just apply all your definitions be good with your algebra of course we can't just forget we can't just make up our own multiplication rules and stuff but aside from that these kinds of problems you have all the tools that you need so if you have any other questions or if you have a specific proof that you're kind of stuck on and you want a little nudge in the you know right direction i can uh, definitely comment down below and i'll get back to you and i really hope that this is all starting to make more sense now and it's actually kind of fun isn't it hey 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 isn't it <laughs> Anyways, I hope so. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and um, as always, let me know if you have any specific topics that you want help with, or that you just really enjoy and could relax to, or um, I hope that you are relaxing and or slash are getting bored enough to fall asleep, whatever you're here for. I hope that you find it or have found it, and my goal just to will be to just continue making content. Um, in any way that can help. So I will see you around. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.